today we are going to be making Bulbasaur. I'm very excited to make this Bulbasaur with you all. He is about two inches tall and from his front feet to his little seed he's about two and a half inches. So, and he fits perfectly in the little Pokemon ball that we made last week. And I'm very excited to get started. So, the materials you're going to need for this project are a 3.25 millimeter crochet hook. I'm trying to get this to focus for you. Maybe you'll just have to trust me. 3.25. You're going to need a yarn needle for sewing in the edges. You will need jade yarn for the body. I used spring green for the seed. I used patty green for the little patches that he has on his legs, arms and legs. For his mouth, I used this light purple color. I'm so sorry I don't have the name anymore because I don't have the little paper anymore, but it's the light, a light purple um, will do any light purple that you have. I believe it's like a light orchid, I want to say, and then also a cream or an off-white or a regular white, whatever color you want to make his toes. I did cream, so, and you will need felt. You'll need white felt and red felt. And I cut those pieces out of these. So just red and white felt. Okay, let's get started. To begin, you're gonna wanna grab your jade yarn and your 3.25 millimeter crochet hook. And we're gonna begin with a magic circle. So take the end of your yarn and lay it across your hand. Wrap this part of the yarn around your two fingers, making an X. Then grab the yarn of your pinky. Insert your hook underneath the first loop and grab the second loop. Pull that loop through and twist. Now, slip that circle off of your fingers and taking this yarn over here, yarn over your hook. Pull through, creating your first little loop there. Now you have a magic ring or a magic circle. Pull it tight by pulling this yarn tail and make your circle a little bit smaller. With this project, we're gonna be starting with a magic ring of six. So you're gonna to wanna to put six single crochets into that magic ring. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Go ahead and pull that tight. Now, for round two, go ahead and tuck this tail under while you're crocheting so you won't have to come back and crochet it later. For round two, we're gonna put an increase in every single one of these stitches that you just made. So you should have six stitches around and how you can count your stitches is there are these little V's in your work. So count back six if you need to. One, two, three, four, five, six. And that is the stitch that you'll be going into. So insert your hook into that first stitch around. 
and put two single crochets into one stitch. One, two. Continue that pattern around into every stitch around. So by the end of round two, you will have 12 stitches and I will see you at the end. I have just finished round two and I have 12 stitches around. And now this yarn tail that I sewed or over, I crocheted over, I didn't sew over it. I'm gonna go ahead and clip it. Careful not to clip the one that you're working with. So my scissors are getting really dull. I should probably get a new pair. Okay, so now for round three, we're going to be doing one single crochet, one increase. And that is the pattern all the way around. And at the end of the pattern, you will have 18 stitches. So you're going to do one single crochet and then two single crochets into that next stitch. One single crochet, two single crochets. So let me show you the pattern. One. and then two into the next. Sometimes it can be a little bit tight. I really like to make my stitches tight for amigurumi so that there's no holes in our finished little animal. So just be patient with yourself. So that was one, one, two. And do that all the way around, one, and if you need, you can use a stitch marker to mark where you're at. One, two. So now I'm actually on stitch number six. One and two. Okay, I will meet you back when we get to stitch number 18 and we will be beginning round four. I have just finished round three and I have now 18 stitches all the way around. The next round is, we're gonna start forming the ears on both sides of the Bulbasaur. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do eight single crochets and then we're gonna do what's called a popcorn stitch. And the popcorn stitch is just, you're gonna put four single crochets into that one stitch. And I will show you how to do that when we get there. So let's go ahead and do that. So go ahead and insert your hook into the first one and we're gonna do eight single crochets together. One. Two. Three. Four. Five, six, seven, eight. Now we're going to do the popcorn stitch. So what's different about the popcorn stitch is we're not doing four individual single crochets. We're doing them together. So it'll be four single crochets, but they're going to all be together. So to start off, you need to insert your hook just like you're going to do a regular single crochet. Yarn over. Pull your yarn through. Yarn over. And pull through one loop on your hook. So you'll have two loops on your hook still. Now insert your hook into that same stitch. Pull up your loop. And now you have three loops on the hook. You're going to yarn over and pull through that first one. We're going to do that two more times for a total of four times. Insert your hook. Pull up a loop. And it gets a little bit tight. Don't worry. Now you have four loops on the hook and you have one more time to go in. 
insert your hook, pull up a loop, pull through one loop. Now you have five loops on the hook. You need to yarn over and pull through all five loops. And that creates a little bubble type stitch and makes it so that your ear will pop up once we get done crocheting this round. So now you need to do eight more crochets, eight more single crochets, and then another popcorn stitch. And I will meet you here when we do that step. So repeat what you just did. I'm on stitch eight, and I'm just gonna show you that popcorn stitch one more time, because it can be tricky. So you're going to insert your hook like a regular single crochet into that next stitch. Pull up a loop. Yarn over, pull through one loop, insert your hook again for another single crochet, pull up a loop, yarn over, and now you've got three on your hook, so you're going to pull through that first one and leave those other two, and now you'll still have three. You need to do it two more times. Insert your hook, pull up a loop. Pull through that first loop. Now you have four on your hook. Now we're on number four. Insert your hook. Pull up a loop. And you'll have five. Go through that first one. And you should have five. Yarn over and pull through all five. Wiggle it a little if you need. There you have it. I lost a little piece. There we go. And that completes round four. Four is our popcorn stitch. For round five and six, we will do one single crochet around the entire thing. So you're going to have two rows of 18 single crochets. So make sure and get right into that very next stitch so that you'll have the ear pop up how it needs to pop out. and go around 18 times. So two, three, four. I'm gonna show you what to do when you get to the popcorn stitch. Five, six, seven, eight and now you're to your popcorn stitch so you can see that you have like a big longer stitch right here go ahead and insert into that and that's going to be your ninth stitch right there and just continue around all the way around two rounds of 18 stitches okay so his little head is really starting to form you can pop these ears out even more as you go along and once we stuff the head as well, we can really pop the ears out, kind of make them stand out a little more. Now, round number seven, we're going to be switching yarn color on this round in the middle of the round. But don't worry, it'll be okay. I used to get so freaked out when a pattern called for a color change. I'm like, no, I can't do it. But we're going to do it and we're going to be okay. So. For round seven, we're going to start by crocheting in the front loop only. Now, the front loop only means usually when we crochet, we crochet through both loops. So one and two. But what it means when you're going to crochet through the front loop is the loop nearest to you. That's the front loop. If it calls to crochet in the back loop only, then it's the loop on the closest to the inside of the loop. So here's your back loop, and here is your front loop. And most of the time we crochet through both loops. So right now we're going to crochet through the front loop only. And we're going to do a pattern of one single crochet and one increase. So through the front loop only, 
one single crochet and we're going to repeat that four times and then an increase one and two okay now we do that three more times so here's our second one one single crochet and then our increase one and two Okay, two more times, one single crochet, whoopsie, it's not catching, it's really not catching, there we go, one single crochet, one increase. And then now we are on our fourth little step of this pattern, one single crochet and increase. Next we will be crocheting two single crochets and on that second stitch we will be switching colors to the purple color. Let me finish our increase here. This is creating his back. So let's go in for our one single crochet with, into both loops. And then on this second one, go in like normal, pull up your yarn like normal, but go ahead and grab your purple yarn and wrap it around and pull that through. That way you have a hidden, you have hid your purple yarn, but it's gonna be exactly where we need it to be. Okay, so when you start crocheting with the purple yarn, go ahead and just keep this yarn tucked behind and crochet over it so that you can tuck it in as you go. For the purple yarn, you're going to do back loop only six single crochets. Remember, the back loop is farthest from you. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Now on this sixth stitch, you're going to yarn over with the jade and pull the jade through. Okay, and now you can go ahead and clip your purple yarn. You will work it in as you crochet, and then I'm also going to trim this right now while I'm right there. Okay. And now you need to do two single crochets with the, gr with the jade. And these are in both loops only. One. And two. All right, so there we have his little mouth started. And I will meet you back for round eight. Round eight is 22 single crochets around. So regular single crochets. So one, two, and just continue that all the way around. And when you get to the purple, just continue to crochet it like normal and it makes these cool patterns and it kind of looks like teeth. So just go through both loops, only 22 crochets around. I just completed round eight and it was 22 single crochets around. So right now we have 22 single crochets. 
The next round is round nine, and it is two single crochets, 10 increases, two single crochets, and then back loop only to form his neck. So I'm gonna do this round with you because it's a little bit more intense. Okay, so the first two are two regular single crochets. One, and two. Now the next 10, you will be putting two single crochets into every stitch. So one, two. Do that for the next 10. One, two, 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 three, Two, four, two, five, two, Seven, two, eight, two, nine. Ten. Two. Now you will be doing two single crochets regular. It's kind of like right by his ear, so you can kind of see that. One. And two. Now, for his front part of his neck, we need to decrease. So we'll be doing four decreases in the back loop only. So here's our first one. Second one. Third one. Oh, sorry, I don't know if I've explained a decrease yet. So for a decrease, you're basically just putting two stitches together. So you insert your hook into that first stitch, pull up a loop, and then insert your hook into that second stitch and pull up a loop. And then you have three loops on your hook when you're combining two stitches into one. Yarn over and pull through all three and then you have successfully made a decrease and you have decreased two stitches into one. So at the end of round nine, you will have 28 stitches around if you go back and count. We're coming into round 10 and round 10, you're gonna do one more decrease. In the back loops only again, just helping his little neck come in. And then you're going to do 27 single crochets. So you're just going to do regular single crochets. So one, two, and you continue that all the way around until you get to 27. After round 10, you're going to want to take a minute to start adding some of these details. That way, I just like to do it before I step it, before I do anything. That way they're on there and I don't have to worry about them later. So pull that out so that it doesn't come loose and you'll hold this to the side so that you don't accidentally sew that in. I make the spots with the patty green. So go ahead and get your yarn needle. And 
right by his, his left ear, right ear. <laughs> it's his left ear, but it's our right. So on the right side of his head, as we're looking at it, I like to place a spot right on the top. And so see how this can kind of get in the way? Just try and hold it out of your way so that you don't, it's a huge pain to try and take out. And if you count, I go in between the second and third round. So you have one, two, three. So I go right about here. I'm trying to get it to where I want it to go. It's not cooperating. Why won't it go there? <laughs> okay, we're just gonna go there. That will be good. All right, and then it's kind of a triangle shape. So I go down into this one. And then I'm going to come over here and go back up. And I, the, all the pictures I found, he had like three little spots on his head, three little triangles. So there's the first one. And I'm going to go ahead and go back in right here. Oh, come on. It's being stubborn. And kind of go across so that it makes it like a nice triangle shape. Triangular shape. Okay, so there's his first little spot. Now his next spot I'm going to put like right over here. And this one, there we go, right there. I only do one. I don't go back and forth, back and forth. Just one. And then he has one more, kind of lower, right here. And again, I just do one for this one. And now you're just gonna wanna clip that yarn and tie it off. Here's a little spot, kinda cool. Oh, did I mess up? Let's see. I think we're okay. Yes, we are. So, just clip this and I tie it in there. I give it a couple of knots to hold it tight. And then trim these. And then we're going to continue. Oh no, we're going to give it a little stuffing. So I just use polyfill. It's from Walmart. It's kind of soft. And just stuff it in there. If you don't have stuffing, you can use yarn scraps. I have seen people use yarn scraps and they're great. I like to get them nice and firm so that they're, the ears kind of poke out better when it's nice and firm and just good. But that is just a little too much. <laughs> okay, so there we are so far. So off camera, I noticed that I had made his spots like really crooked they were like way over here so just make sure when you're making his spots so I had to redo it anyway when you're making his spots just make sure that they're kind of in line with the center because you want these spaces open for to put the eyeballs that we're going to make at the very end it was just like I was looking at it and I was like yeah that's not going to work <laughs> so I had to redo it anyway we are now on round 11 Round 11, you're going to do 20 single crochets and then four decreases. So at the end of this round, you will have 24 stitches. So just, my yarn is doing something weird. There we go, it's all right. So go ahead and go around 24 stitches and I will meet you at the decrease. I meant to say 
go around 20 single crochets. So I'm on three right now. So four, five, and continue that until you get to 20 single crochets. And then I will meet you at the decrease. All right, so I just finished my 20 single crochets. Now we are going to do four decreases. We're gonna do the front loop only again. So one, this is how I, I hide mine by using the front loop only because it creates, it's a little bit less bulky. So one, two, And four. At the end of this round, you should have 24 stitches. Pull that tighter. 24 stitches, and he's starting to kind of get a shape right there. It's a dinosaur shape. All right, a frog shape. <laughs> For round 12 and 13, you're going to be doing two rows of 24 stitches. So just do two rounds of 24 single crochets. One, two, and continue that for two rounds of 24. Okay, so we just finished round 12 and 13. You should have 24 stitches around if you go back and count. The next couple of rounds are just going to be decreasing and finishing off. So the next round is going to be round 14 and you need to do two single crochets. So one single crochet, one single crochet, and then a decrease. So two single crochets into each stitch and then a decrease. So I'll do that with you right now. One single crochet, and then one single crochet in the next stitch, and then your decrease. Now you will continue that pattern all the way around, and at the end of this round, you will have 18 stitches. All right. So I've just completed round 14. I have 18 stitches around, and now we need to stuff it some more. Make him nice and plump. are going to do our next round and it is our final round round 15 and we're going to do one single crochet one decrease all the way around and then we'll have 12 stitches at the end of that round then we'll clip it clip the yarn and then we will finish up with our sewing needle and I will show you how to do that so first let's do one single crochet into the next stitch and one decrease. Okay, continue that all the way around and you will have 12 stitches at the end of this round. So I just finished round 15 and I towed a little fib because you're actually gonna have to do one more round. So at this point, go ahead and stuff it a little more just get that stuffing in there as good as you can because 
once we close it up, you can't really add more stuffing. I mean, maybe you could through the holes on the side, but I think that would make your creature look bad. Okay, so now we're just going to do six decreases. Oops. So one decrease. And two decreases. Okay. Okay, now you're going to slip stitch into this next stitch right here. And you're going to clip your yarn. Pull it through, pull that so it makes a little knot. Now there's some of that stuffing. Okay, grab your yarn needle and thread it. And here's how you can make a very nice circle. You're just going to go into the front loop of every stitch. And then you're going to pull it tight and it creates a very nice circle and it makes it look exactly the same. So that's how you finish off. And then just hide your yarn tail. And since there is, I got some stuffing. There we go. Got it. It's bothering me. Okay. Since this is going to be a child's toy, I'm going to really try and reinforce it a lot. So just go back and forth as many times as you think you need. And you can put a little knot in it if you want. So I usually like to do. Yeah. Because it will cooperate. Little knot. And then flip it. And his body is complete. Now we just need to make his legs and his little feet. And yay, little Bulbasaur's body. Okay, so we're going to make the two front legs first. I'm going to make one with you. And you go ahead and make the second one on your own. So we begin with a magic ring of four. So go ahead and make your circle again, just like we did in the beginning. But instead of doing six single crochets into the magic ring, we're going to do four. One. Two. Three. And four. 
pull it tight. And now for rounds two through five, which is going to be four rows, you will make four single crochets in every stitch and it'll create a little leg. One. Two. Three. Four. And you can see my work is like curling up on itself. So I haven't done the fourth one yet, but it is really curling up. So I'm just going to Take that out for a minute and turn it inside out. By rolling it in. So sometimes it's a little finicky, but you just gotta keep at it. Three and here's our fourth one. So I have three more rows of single crochets into each stitch. I'm going to clip this right now. Two more rounds of that, and I will meet you back to show you how to do the pattern. Once you get to the end of your leg, go ahead and do a slip stitch and clip your yarn. And then go ahead and add the details, the little scales, and so pull that tight. And this will be for sewing onto the Bulbasaur. So I use the patty green to make the little triangles on the Bulbasaur, on his legs. I do two on each leg and I try and do them in different spots. So go ahead and get your yarn, oh I want a smaller one. I keep on doing that, grabbing the bigger yarn needle, but I prefer these smaller needles for the little or smaller details. Alright, so I just go in right through the top here and come out through about midway then pull it through and then go back up and out through that top. And I'm just going to put two of the little so I'm going to go right back down in and put the next one over here. And then I'm going to cut that green yarn. Tie it and then I stuff it back down in. Well, I'm going to cut it a little more because that's kind of a lot of yarn to stuff in that small area. I'm just going to trim this, that right there. And using the back of the needle, I'm going to push that knot in. Maybe. It's pretty tight. Let's try the crochet hook. it down in there. And 
hide those in place. Next, using the cream yarn, we're going to add the toes. I think the toes are so cute. Hmm, let me clean up my area. I'm a very messy crocheter, so I make a huge mess. You don't even want to see under my table. I just like throw the yarn and then I have to sweep it up after later. Okay, so thread your cream. And on the very bottom, we're going to find the little, you know, how we had that little circle of the magic ring. We're going to go up through. And we're going to go back into that same hole where the magic ring began. That's our first toe. And he has three toes. So we do that two more times. Let's see where we're coming through here. Yeah, I think that'll be good. One, two, and three. And I'll just come up over here and I will cut this. And then we're going to hide that in a similar way that we did for the green. Just going to go right up through there and come out that same exact tie it and actually I'll show you another quite simple way to get it to go through cut both of these about the same And then go back through and come down and just pull that so that the knot has to go inside and hide in there. And then we trim it at the very bottom and poke that back inside to make sure that it's hiding inside of the leg. All right, so that is how you make the front leg details. The back leg details are exactly very similar, exactly the same, except for we make that patch thicker and we just do one patch on each. So I'll show you how to make a back leg now, but I won't show you how to do the details since I showed you right there. So they're exactly the same except for one patch instead of two patches. The main difference with the back and front legs is the back leg is a little bit wider and it only has one patch. So let me show you how to get started with that one. We're going to start with a magic ring of six instead of a magic ring of four. One. Two, three, four, five, six. Pull it tight and single crochet one in every single stitch around. So you'll have six stitches at the end of round two. So round one magic ring, six into the magic ring. Round two is one single crochet in each stitch around. One, two, three, Four, five, 
five. And six. Next, we're going to be increasing from six to eight so that it gives it that little bit of a wider look to it. So let's go ahead and trim this tail. Now we're going to do one single crochet two increases, and then three single crochets. One. Now your increase. One. And two. A second increase. One and two, and then three single crochets for five. I mean, that was six, <laughs> seven, and eight. Now we're going to do eight single crochets for round four. Round four is eight single crochets in every stitch. One, two, three, four, five, Six, seven, sorry I bumped the camera, and eight. Now our final round is round five, and we're going to be doing a decrease on this round. So one single crochet, two decreases, and then three single croch crochets to get you back to six stitches. So do your one single crochet. Now you need to do your first decrease right here. Second decrease. And now three single crochets in the next three stitches. One, two, three. Now a slip stitch and clip your yarn. And pull it through and pull that nice and tight. Now you'll add your details just like we did on the front leg. I go in twice so that it makes a nice big bump leaving one patch right there and then your three toes and that is how you create the back legs. So before we do the feed I would like to go ahead I like to go ahead and sew the legs on. So you can pin them in place to help you out and see where you want them to be. So kind of like to leave a little space right there.
and then your back legs. It kind of, bubbles are remind me of a frog. So place them like you would place, like think about how a sitting frog looks. And then kind of eyeball it and see if that's where you want it. Go ahead and thread your needle. And I'm going to show you one of these legs on camera. Just so. So I just like to go back and forth. The tops of the legs. And just go back into that where you came out. Go back into that same hole. And then come out over here. And again into the leg and then pull out this pin and go ahead and pull that tight and sew it back down in and come out anywhere on the body that's like you can get to and back up Pull it tight. And I'm going to do one more stitch going into the top of the leg. And then I'm going to do like secure the leg down. See how it's kind of like flying all over the place? Now I'm going to put like a stitch to secure it. And I'm going to leave it right where it is. I think that'll be just fine. and just pull that down and secure it. I can see a little um, cream color poking through right there. So I'm gonna actually go around with the blue and kind of cover that up. You can cover things up as you're sewing. If your holes are too big or something, I'm kind of picky about that. If stuffing is showing through, I like to go ahead and sew it. So. You'll have to fix your legs as you go, but there's the first one and just go, I'm going to go in and I'm going to come out the back and then I will make all four yarn tails come out right here and I'll tie them off together and hide them in the body. The last thing we have to crochet is the seed for Bulbasaur's back. So, we still have to do the eyes, but that's not crocheting. So, here's the last thing we crochet. I use the spring green. It's a nice bright green for the seed. We're going to start off with a magic ring. I love to use magic ring for amigurumi. I feel like it creates that shape that you need. And so, if you're having trouble with the magic green, I would suggest just practice, practice, practice until you get it. Because there are other ways to start them, but I just love the magic ring. <laughs> okay, so six into the magic ring. And that is round one. Six single crochets into the magic ring, pull it tight. Round two is increase in every stitch. So you will have 12 at the end. So I'll show you the first one. And remember to weave in that tail. One. And 
two. Now continue that all the way around. Increase in every single stitch, two single crochets in every stitch, and you will have 12 stitches by the end of round two. I have just finished round two, and now I have 12 stitches around. I'm going to clip my tail right now. And for round three, we're going to increase to 18 stitches. So we will do one single crochet, one increase, which an increase is two single crochets into the same stitch. One single crochet, one increase. So I'll do the first couple with you and then I will leave you on your own. One single crochet, one increase. Continue that all the way around. So one, oops, and two. Continue that all the way around until you have 18 stitches. And I will meet you when we are starting round four. I have just finished round three, and I now have 18 stitches around. We will now do round four, which is an our last round of increase and we will increase to 24 stitches so we will do one single crochet one single crochet and then an increase and remember that increase is two single crochets into the same stitch one single crochet one single crochet one increase Continue that all the way around until you have 24 stitches around your circle. And I will meet you back for round five. I have just finished round four and I now have 24 stitches around. For round five, it will be 24 single crochets in, one, <laughs> let me say that again, one single crochet in all 24 stitches. So one single crochet in every stitch. One, two, three. All right, continue that all the way around until you get 24. And I will see you for round six. I've just completed round 20, I mean round five, which is 24 single crochets in all the way around. And you can see it's starting to into a, a ball type shape and so now we're gonna go ahead and start on our decrease rounds on round six it will be two single crochets and one decrease so that we'll be decreasing down to 18 stitches so one single crochet one single crochet one decrease which is two stitches together one one and two together one and two so how i count that is now i've got three stitches so i say one two three and then i would say four five and six six will be a decrease Continue that pattern all the way around until you have 18 stitches left. Only 18 stitches. We're going to begin adding stuffing at this point. And just a little bit so it doesn't really get in our way. Pull it down while we crochet. Okay, now we're going to go to round seven. And this is one single crochet, one decrease. So one single crochet, one decrease. Continue that pattern all the way around until you have 12 stitches. Okay, I've just finished round seven and I now have 12 stitches around. And it's such a nice shape. 
The round number eight, the round that we're on, is six decreases all the way around. So one, two, three, four, It's a little tricky right here at the end. You know what, before we put that in, we need to add some more stuffing. So before you close up this hole completely, mine is too loose, it needs some more stuffing in there. I should have probably... Because we want it to be like the shape of a bulb, like if you've ever seen a tulip bulb or a lily. My favorite flowers are lilies. They start out as a bulb. So that's kind of like Bulbasaur got his name from. He has a bulb on his back. The seed on his back is like a bulb. So kind of funny. Interesting. A little Pokemon trivia here. <laughs> I did my homework. Okay, so now we were on decrease number five. That one's going to be tricky. Five and six. Now, for the very last round, you single crochet into every six. Single crochet into every stitch around, so it's six single crochets. One, and this is round nine, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay. Now, go ahead and do a slip stitch, and trim your yarn, and pull that through. Now what we are going to do, isn't that cute? Kind of looks like a little tiny onion or garlic. <laughs> so, go ahead and thread your needle. And we are going to go down, right down straight through the center of that hole and come out in the very center of the bulb, the bulb seed. And pull it tight. So see how it kind of did that? Like pull down your little bulb a little bit. Then we are going to go around like this and go right back through the center of that seed. Coming out the exact center again at the bottom. Pull it tight. And we do that three more times. Two. And make sure that you keep it like spaced. Oh, I did it wrong. Whoops. Scratch that. 
So I pulled it out because I realized I was making the bulb not be a bulb anymore and I gave you the wrong instructions. So it's already through right here. I gotta thread my needle again. I had to pull it out with my needle. Sorry, my daughter just woke up from her nap. Okay, I try and do these at night when they're sleeping. So instead of going directly in the center there, you're gonna go to the side so that we don't mess up the shape of that bulb. But you are gonna continue coming right down through the center right here. Okay. And remember, we're gonna do it four times, so we have three more times to go. Two. Three, and four. All right, and then tie that off. Pull that all tight and tie it off and fluff it out how you need it to be, just like that, okay? Tie it off and hide your yarn just like we did before. I have no idea why I told you to hide your yarn tail. I think I was a little stressed because my daughter woke up and I don't like them running around without supervision. So I was like, okay, I gotta go check on them. Anyway, they are just fine. No worries. But anyway, so you're going to not hide your yarn tail. You're going to sew it directly onto the back of the Bulbasaur. I'm going to try and get this in a little bit quickly. Okay. So going back and forth, just like we did with the legs. So on the seed to his back. And you'll probably want to put extra reinforcement. So I will leave you to do that put extra reinforcement since it's a child's toy and if a child will be playing with it make sure that you can pull it you know I'll leave you to finish off sewing and hiding your yarn tail and I'll be back to do the eyes so he's almost finished it took me a long time to figure out how I wanted to do the eyes um, but I ended up going with this design I looked at a lot of pictures so I you're going to want to make some really small shapes here. So I start with like a small rectangle and then kind of curve it around just like that. So that is actually a little too big. So I'll trim it up a little bit to make it smaller and smaller. The tricky part is getting two that match. So that's how I make the shape is I just start with a rectangle for both white and red. Start with a small rectangle and then trim it like that. Oops. Let's see if that would look good. Yep, pretty good. And make sure that it's gonna look good on his face. So like, I'm gonna trim that white up just a little bit because it's kind of funky. So I'm gonna do that off camera. I just wanted to show you how I get that type of shape, starting with a square, then I cut it down to a smaller rectangle and then cut the curves onto there. So I will be right back and we will glue the eyes on. All right, so I just finished cutting all the eye pieces and I'm going to use fabric tack to put them in place. I begin with the white. Just put a small dot. Oh, and if you want to beforehand to see exactly where you want the eyes to go, you can put a pin right there you can you know make sure you get them squared up 
so that you because when you apply this stuff it it's really sometimes it can change the color of the yarn and so you want to use a tiny little dot and make sure that it's not spilling out for the from the felt so I'm gonna go ahead and go with this line that I've got so I'm gonna go ahead and take that out and put my tiny little dot right there oh no <laughs> this is what I was saying I hope that works and quickly put that white on there and hold it down for just a minute okay now we're gonna do the same thing with this side ah my fabric tack is getting old, so it does this sometimes. Okay. Woo! Get that off of there. Okay. <laughs> so, oh my gosh, it keeps happening. Ah, this is like a blooper. Too bad I'm not that great at editing yet. <laughs> okay. Here we go. It's coming out fast. I'm going to put a tiny dot there. And I'm going to go quick. And we're going to call it good. I'm going to hold it down and make sure that they're in line with each other. Hold it for a couple seconds. Okay, and now I'm going to wipe this off again. It's going crazy over here. And put a tiny dot on both since it's coming out so fast. I'm just going to work quickly here and hope for the best. Okay, try and get that on there. And that on there. Okay, and then hold it down. And maybe count to 10 or 20 or whatever you want. Look at that. It's crazy. It's still coming out like a volcano. All right. Now your bubble sore is done. I personally wait 24 hours before I do anything with them. I mean, I before I would give it to a child or anything. So I, I don't play with them. <laughs> but... This fabric tag needs 24 hours to set up. So, yes. So before you do anything with them, I guess if you want to play with them, you could. But anyway, I am making mine for, I'm making mine for the Phoenix Children's Hospital. So it's going to have a whole year to rest because I my project completion date is to December 2019. So I'm hoping that you're enjoying all these Pokemon videos. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. And I hope you had a wonderful day crocheting with me today. Have a great day. Bye.